Yummy. All right, folks. <clears throat> we back in the lab. We back in the studio. This is the Captain's Law Podcast. I'm your host, Rob, home of your sports trending topics. And today, interviews, I got the lovely Miss Samantha Johnson with me, the melanin agent. agent. Let's get a clap <laughs> on the melanin agent. Hey, guys. <laughs> How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? I am very, very happy <laughs> to be able to get you on, man. I appreciate it. I feel bad because when you sent me that message, who knows how long ago, I looked, I was like, why did I miss this? I know. I was, you know, social media at its finest. I was like, let me just send him a DM. Like, <laughs> we're we're going to talk social media because you on there probably probably on there more than I am. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, so for those who don't know, just uh, give a brief overview of who you are and what you do. Awesome. So I'm Samantha Johnson, born and raised in PG County, Prince George's County, Maryland. Um, um, went to Parkdale High School, you know, the best high school in PG, if you ask me. Okay. <laughs> um, um, and so, you know, I, I, I've I've been around, you know, this area. I'm, I'm a homebody. I'm in real estate, been in the business for five years. And uh, it's so interesting how I got into the business is that I so I mean, I purchased my first home. And that agent was like, you're giving me, you know, pointers that I didn't even know about. Maybe you consider real estate. Um, started that five years ago. And then from there, just been running. I'm trying to help, you know, as many people as possible understand, you know, real estate is the the gap, that generational gap that we see in in, in most of the, you know, in, in most of the area. So, um, yeah, I, I, I just love real estate. I love what I do. I love being able to help people to understand um, if this is the right time to buy and sell. And, you know, being from here, it just gives me joy. Mm. So what were you doing before you were a real estate agent? So um, before I was in real estate, I actually um, was an accountant um, for a nonprofit organization. Um, and then before that, I actually owned my own construction business. Um, really? Actually plumbing. <laughs> really? You was doing it or you owned it? No, 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 no. I, 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 I was the majority owner to get the benefits of uh, the minority um, um, certifications. But um, actually, it was with a, a past significant other. Um, and he was the plumber, the master plumber. And I was the back end running the operations of the, of the, of the business. That's dope. Yeah. So you're not doing that no more. No, no, I'm not doing that anymore. But what's funny is that I am um, integrating what I learned in construction with real estate as well, working with investors. So project management is something that I do as well to help investors mm. be able to just purchase the property and trust me to get the job done for either resale or for them to actually buy and hold. Dope, dope. I only had two realtors. Mm-hmm. Two and the first one was horrible. He was horrible. Really, I gotta share it. I do. I do. I don't listen. I ain't gonna use. <laughs> I ain't gonna use his name, but he was horrible. So this is my second house. The first right. house was in Suitland. You know, I, I'm the veteran, so I had a VA loan. I said, man, let's go ahead and get a house. Me and my wife, we in an apartment, and you know, we just had my son a little. Well, we had been had my son, but we was getting ready to have my daughter. And I was like, man, we, you know, it's time to get a house. You know, mm-hmm. I had motorcycle, you know, I had all the toys. I was like, you know, I need, I want a garage. I just was parking my stuff outside. So we, I don't even know how we found this dude. And we found him and he was just horrible. <laughs> he was so bad. And we didn't know. You well, know, but what made him bad though? That's... <laughs> Number one, he was always late. Um, that's a, and that's a huge thing for me. So yeah. what I was looking for was, all right, I don't know nothing about it. You know, educate me. Mm-hmm. So, you know, he was taking us to houses and did no disrespect to these areas. He was taking us to the hoods <laughs> and just putting us in the house. All of these houses were exactly the same. So he was taking us out uh Marlowe Heights. <laughs> he was taking us to off of what's that, Marlboro Pike on uh on the Suitland side, like Forsville, Forsville Road. Forsville Road. Road. He was taking like, us mm-hmm. all over there. Mm-hmm. He was taking us right by the by the southeast line. Oh, yeah. He was taking us to New Carrollton on these rooms was in the attic. And I'm like, bro, what like I mean, did he have a boss consultation to even say, hey, these are the areas, this is him, what I'm looking for? We told him what we wanted and what we didn't want. Mm. And he just was he just was taking us anywhere to the point where I'm like, and then he was late. Yeah. So you taking us places we didn't want to go. And then you was late. So it was really frustrating. So yeah. finally, when we said, well, we're going to spend a little bit more money. I paid 300000 for my first house. And mm-hmm. that was in 2015. So <laughs> how, how the times have changed. <laughs> for sure. And I bought a single family. It was in Suitland, right there on uh, Suitland Road. Um, you know where the Red Octopus is on Suitland Sing- Road? Yeah, single family, 300000 Single family. It was, everything in the inside was brand new. <laughs> 
uh, fresh plumbing, wires, all granite countertops. Oh, the only thing was the house was just paper thin. Mm-hmm, we mm-hmm. can hear people across the court. It's like arguing. We can hear oh, all of no. that. Yeah. That's an adjustment. Crazy. So then another thing is, you know, so like our court is like here, you see, I don't know, it was maybe five houses or something. Mm-hmm. It was like nine houses in the same space of cul de So the oh, house wow. is only about 1,900 square feet. More than enough space for us, but like we just was on top of each other. So when you got that many houses in the cul de sac, it's cars. And it doesn't about to say it's place. no parking. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. Yeah. So it's cars parked all over the place. And the house was remodeled. So before that, it was homeless people living in there. Oh. You had people that were stealing the copper. So when we moved in, you know, they tried to come back to see. Well, no, they just, people were just sitting outside. Like, oh, like no. we had that house with the little electric box mm-hmm. on there. So people was like sitting out there in the morning. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, what's no, going on? No. So, you know, we called the police, get it, get it rectified. It was a nice house, but it just, I couldn't raise my kids there. Yeah. So then we went back to sell the house and we used this fool again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> fool me was. We so. used him <laughs> twice. And I think he, I think he had found out he had, had some type of illness. Mm. So I was like, "Damn, you gonna sell the house?" You know, I was like, "Man, you gonna sell the house, man?" I'm sorry, man. <laughs> you know, don't just get get my shit sold, man. You, could, I'm I'm just scarred from last time. So we put the house on the market, and um, we had a oh, we had like two or th- made two open houses. Mm. And the first open house, he wasn't even there. He had somebody else do it. Oh, so I'm wow. like, bro. So you had maybe a handful of people came, but everybody was complaining about the cars. They was like, oh, what's up mm-hmm. with all the cars? Mm-hmm. It was like a tow truck down the bottom, had all these cars parked. The so, curb appeal is so everything. I'm, yeah, so I'm like, bro, you got to be here. So did it the second week. He was there. Like maybe one or two people came and they ended up backing out for the same reason. Mm. So then we got a call probably randomly in the middle of the week. And they said, you know, somebody wants to see a house right now. So we left out. We had went over to uh, what's that? Uh, that new community, West Philia. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That that was just being built. So we just went around there and looked at some houses. Really nice. Mm-hmm. And um, a company ended up buying the house. Oh wow! Yeah, we ended up walking away with a nice little piece of change. When did you? So you sold it? What twenty twenty? Right. We sold it in twenty. No, no, we sold it in like twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. We, we, okay. were, we was in between for like six months or so. And that was then, still a good we, time, though. No, it was sale. it was a great time. We walked yeah. away with some money, and um, then you know we found this. Now this house was a realtor we used. That was a friend of my wife's. Okay, that worked together. So he did it part time. So I was like, man, I need a we, we need so full time. Do this all day, but, every day. Exactly. But I, I doubted him. Yeah, I had big doubt. But uh, so he was showing us. I was like, well, I want to see this house. I want to see this. Instead of me just kind of letting him do his thing, I'm like, nah. I let this happen last time, so no, we're not doing it. So then we went to a few houses. He was like, can you let me do my job? So I was like, okay. Ooh, okay. So he brought us here. Mm-hmm. He, brought us to, he brought us to this house, and then he took us to some houses on racetrack. Okay. So the way this is set up is on the top floor, you have the master bedroom, you know, two doors, and it's got a skylight, it's got a fireplace, it's got an office and all that. Mm-hmm. And then around, around the corner... You got the kids' rooms. I said, "So it's, it, I'm yeah, sold." It's I didn't need. I got there. I said, "I don't care about none of this." If you telling me that I'm away from the kids, kids we yes, were sold. And yes. this and this 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 property only had one picture online, and really, it, and it was sitting on the market for almost six months. Really. So I'm walking around like, "What's wrong with it?" Like I'm looking for something. Like, What's mm-hmm. wrong? What's wrong? So we went to racetrack, and racetrack was nice, mm-hmm. but when we got there, there was. 15, 20 cars all going to the same place. Oh, Nobody yeah, came no. here. Nope. So although racetrack was nice and they wanted a lot more money, we ended up putting an offer in for this the same day for 450 mm-hmm. And racetrack, they wanted 500 Now, all the houses in this neighborhood now are upper sixes. Uh, but, no, for sure. For so, sure. It's the location. And sure. we ended up getting it. And she had it on She had it on the market for 590 Really? Was, no, four, I'm sorry, four ninety. Four ninety. Four ninety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like, and they probably was just happy to get just an offer yeah, after yeah, six yeah. months. So we gave her that, you know, no closing help, and we we was good. I had the VA loan, so it was good. Yeah, so. no, that's awesome. And it's probably was just them not having photos, which made it seem like something was really probably bad. wrong it with like the just, property. Like you took it with your phone yep. and. Nothing. <sighs> now I ain't gonna say we didn't have to come in here and fix a few things. Of course, but, but it's cosmetic though. 
and that, uh, and that's some of it was a little costly. We, mm-hmm. had, we we had to get the deck reinforced, so we got like a two level deck. Did you have right the inspection? There. Yeah, but we we, we and you we, said we, we, well, I'll do it. I'll we take agreed. Care we of agreed it. to it. It was just, I mean, he was honest. He said, "Look, man, you you probably dropped maybe five or six grand." He said, "But this is a steal for." The mm-hmm. potential that the house has, mm-hmm. so we went ahead with it, and we've been we've been happy ever since. It's been quiet, yeah, you for know, sure. compared to the cars flying up and down four ninety five. Yeah, for it, sure, it's been cool. And I, I mean, I appreciate you just sharing your story because at the end of the day, I think that people have to realize it's not about the cosmetic look of a house which should entice you to purchase is what do you see the possibilities in this house do you see yourself here long term are you getting a deal like you said the one that was the other house that 15 cars was going to versus this one which one can I negotiate to be the best deal for me and my family and I so I think that you know a lot of people got to understand the mindset and the mind shift when dealing with any real estate market changes as a person looking to buy a home versus a renter there are two different things mm. um, and just like I said, the cause you would be surprised how many people decide not to purchase a home because of cosmetic. Oh, the carpet. Oh, the paint. I mean, listen. <laughs> listen. <laughs> yeah. Come on. That those things can be adjusted. But if you're getting a deal where you're like you did, you saved forty thousand dollars on a deal because you were the only one that probably put in the offer within six months mm. versus going to that other property, you probably would have been paying more just because they had a updated appliances or <laughs> they oh, wait, listen, had listen, I, I, I ain't gonna lie to you. It, it was it was nice. Yeah. It was sure. real nice. For but sure. I mean they wanted, you know, Five fifty, yeah, and I was like, damn, I don't know if I can give him five. I mean, yeah, that, that sounds like a lot, you yeah. know. But um, and you that, got cash flow here, like I mean, if you wanted to, you know, not give it too much about what your house, but you have a whole kitchenette downstairs, like I, I just, a whole separate entrance. A you lot can, of people say that I just, I did, I've done it. You can, but but this is, but you'll be upstairs. I don't want, <laughs> I don't want nobody in my house. Yeah, I get, once I built the studio, and for, it's, first of all, it'd be freezing in here. Yeah. So nobody, unless I'm going to drill more holes and make more vents, there's only this vent and the vent in the other room. That's the only heat coming in here. Listen, so you better put some of them units up. <laughs> man, look, I just, I tried it, man. I just, I, I wouldn't feel comfortable yeah. with, you know, even though, you know, somebody could virtually be in here and I got cameras all over the place. But right. No, nah, nah, right. I, I, ain't, I ain't looking to make that type of extra money. Well, listen, if it's yeah. ever a, an option for you, trust and believe, you would, you would be you would be successful in it for sure. There'll be additional cash flow. I believe it. So, you know, it's always, I mean, for you to raise the kids and everything in and, you know, when you and wife you get older, you may want to downsize and this may be the opportunity. That's what she want to do. She, she's just like, you know, once the kids graduate, she want to move. Mm-hmm. She don't have no ties. And mm-hmm. my, my wife from Southeast she don't have no. She don't have no time. She will get up and move south in a second. She's waiting on me. I love it. I love it. I'm a homebody. I'm like I'm gonna be at the house now. I will move from here. But if I if I was to move from here, mm-hmm. I'm moving southern south. PG County. Yeah, at, for sure. At, at that point where. The, the school and all that doesn't matter. It's just right. more of a piece of mind. Plus, I don't have no backyard. Yeah. So what would you what you think about Southern Merlin? So you thinking about uh what Akakee, Fort Washington? Probably La Plata, La Plata and, and Oh, you and, that's for, and that's keep not, going that's, that's south of Maryland, not PG County. Well, I mean like you know, like past, like Bryant's Road, past, <laughs> yeah. past down somewhere Hughesville, down there. Yeah, yeah. The, over there. Yeah. As, as long as they still have all the amenities, mm-hmm. you know, I'm cool with that. That's mm-hmm. the really that's that's what brought me to Bowie. Yeah. Was the amenities. I said, well, you know, in Suitland, it's a food desert because mm-hmm. you just got you got the uh, the giant right there on uh, Silver Hill Road. Right. You got I don't know if that Sharpers is still there on Pennsylvania Avenue. I think it is. I, th- I think you had an Aldi, yeah. and then you got the Walmart and Clint. That's it. Yeah. So that's a lot of areas of people living squeezing into these one few stores. I come out here, it's two giants, it's two Lidl's, mm-hmm. it's Two, it's a Home Depot, it's a Lowe's, it's two Targets, mm-hmm. it's a Walmart, it's that's it's just Harris like near like Woodmore. Woodmore is the same exact thing. Woodmore is so it's, congested. It's now, starting though. to get so con- Oh my gosh, I was just saying that on Saturday I went there and the line to get there was so long. It's congested. And then they have now they have it where you have the townhomes that they built over there, um, the Chick fil A line, which is always crazy long. And then they said that um Wegmans is the number one um revenue flowing. Wegmans in the country. Really? That's how much money they make over there. It, it is a good Wegmans. It, it's it a good Wegmans. It is. Wegmans. You, you got to go in the morning. We drove, we, we drove from Suitland to that Wegmans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, that Wegmans is good. But it, just like in that area, it's no other grocery store over there. That's true. But like, I mean, if you go on Central Avenue, I think that 
Yeah, no. Oh, with a giant in Largo. If but you, that's that, that, that's an old one too, though. That's that's a classic one there. Yeah, they, and they, you know they swapping all them out now. They, like like yeah. they did the one in with it, Fort Washington. They yeah. trying. They wanted to look like that. Yeah, but I mean, it is what it is. So only five years in real estate. Five years. Crazy. I'd have thought you'd been doing it for twenty. No, five years. I came in the business just like running. Um, I was still doing my nine to five, and so I made it my business in 2018. That's when I started real estate. I made it my business to say, hey, if I can reach my goal within this one first year, then I'm ready to go full time. And so I was able to reach my goal. And I was like, OK, that same month, the following year, I went completely full time into real estate. Um, I mean, it was just it's, it's a it's, it's fun. You know, <laughs> it, it really is fun because of the so many different opportunities that you have in real estate, not just being a resource to your community, but the people that you meet, the stories that I can tell you about different clients that, you know, people that didn't think it could be possible. Actually, it has been possible for them to get into real estate um, or to buy real estate. So just overall, um, the five years I've grown a lot. Um, just understanding just the county itself and just understanding what people's hesitations are and try to help them to 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 prevent those hesitations. Mm. So in that short period of time, mm -hmm. do you feel like, uh, you know, the real estate industry has evolved in any type of way or or do you see like maybe some something brewing in the near future as far as how how the whole thing works? Um. So the real estate right now is tricky. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, being in the industry, um, it was just a lawsuit done uh, from, against NAR, National Association of Realtors, um, with sellers complaining about paying the commission of the buyer, the buyer's agent. Mm. So that was a lawsuit that was won um, on the seller's but seller's behalf. And so it was just interesting to see how that turns out, whether NAR will appeal and things like that. Um, also, technology with Zillow and Redfin, you know, everyone is a real estate agent now. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Zillow, yeah. I forgot how Zillow works. It's been a minute. It's, it's, it's like the cheapest way to go, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's free. It's free. It's it's free. So they'll tell you what they think your your house value is. Um, they'll show you properties that's available in your area. Um, so it's just a, something that allows people just to see or, um, you know, look at things that they're, they would want to purchase in the future. Um, um, but with those, that being said, I feel like that me as a real estate agent, I really have to show what my worth is um, in this market because, <laughs> you know, people now will have the question of why am, why am I hiring you? And the thing is, it's more than just showing a property and, oh, this is what I want and let me buy it. It's a lot that's involved in mm. it as well. You think so. you think them Zillow numbers is accurate? And uh, like like how off are they? I mean, they could be significantly off because the thing about it is they're not is they're not asking questions. I mean, they're just basing mm. it off the neighborhood, but they're not saying, OK, I mean, have you done any updates? Have you added a bathroom? Have you taken away a bedroom? I mean, like, oh. what have you done? They're just giving you an overall view and it's not accurate. I mean, it takes more to know what the value of someone's home is just. By just looking at pictures, it's it's more to that. So it's safe to say that it's actually less. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's less than. It could be. It yeah. could be. It could be. So, I mean, but I'm not going to knock anybody's hustle, even Zillow or Redfin. But, you know, it's not always. Look, I'm just saying, I get the email. I'll be like. Damn. Right. <laughs> it went up 10,000 more. Like, I'm like, boo, we, 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 listen, we, we up too high. Listen, listen, you know, you know. But listen, you could always just get in contact with an agent and they can run comps for you always. I, I like the agent. I'm, I'm old fashioned, man. I just look, just go ahead and do that for me. Let, let me know when you're ready for me. And we come out, okay, we want to go ahead and get that. Get that. Right. I'm just too much, too much. I mean, that just that, that age. I don't want to do all that. Work. I'll leave that to y'all. I'll leave that to the professional. We'll appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> So as far as the, the entire process, what what's the what part of the of the process do you enjoy the most? Um, I would say I mean, I like the entire process, to be honest with you, from the very beginning to someone thinking that it's not possible, like I said before, or, you know, thinking that it has to be this 800 credit score and then just letting them know that it doesn't and things like that. I think from the beginning all the way to the end, I really do enjoy um, because even if we're under contract, I still need us to get all the way through. So from beginning to end. Um, so I would say if I really had to say any part of it, it would be probably closing because at that time you're done. 
you're done. That's number one. And someone can really be like, can breathe. Because I'm telling you, during that time from when I'm speaking with you in the very beginning, always a closing, I am a therapist. I am your cousin. I am your <laughs> keeping a real sister. I'm just mm-hmm. like, I'm definitely more involved um, in the whole process itself because I definitely I want to make sure that my clients understand that your goal is my goal. And contrary to your first agent, you know, them just showing you just random stuff that you didn't really ask for. That's not what I I, I look to do. I look to really find properties that you would enjoy, but also reap the benefits of as far as gaining equity. Okay. Let me hit you with a curveball. Mm -hmm. What's the quickest and what's the longest it's ever taken you to sell a house? I've sold a house in two weeks. Um, and the longest I sold a house was six months. Damn. Yep. And that was because it was a um, short sale. Mm. So pretty much what that is, is that if you owe more, um, on your mortgage than what the house is worth, you could possibly get a short sale and negotiate with the bank to be able to, um, sell that property at a lower price than what's owed. So is that, is that common? It's starting to be common a little bit more, to be honest with you, um, you know, where people are just, you know, over, the, over their heads, you know, in 2020, asking ridiculously over price. Um, even though interest rates were low, you still were paying a lot higher with those properties because it was so much competition. So a lot of people are just, you know, doing short sales. Um, and it's common because a lot of people, if you're looking where you're going into foreclosure or have a notice of default, instead of your house going into foreclosure, you could possibly just do a short sale to prevent from your credit being, you know, hurt for too much of a long period of time. Mm, damn. So that's crazy. Yeah. Okay. So let's shift. Mm-hmm. So it's a competitive market out here. We both know that. Mm-hmm. What are you doing? What are you doing to, to win these people over? What are you doing? To, what are you doing to steal this family from me? Relationships. Relationships will take you places that money can't. Okay. Tell me about um, it. I, I always think that it's all about the synergy of a group of people. So I always feel like that in order for me to give you the best quality service, you have to trust me. And the only way you could trust me is that you have to like me as a person. And not only that, you have to see some numbers like what have you done to for me lately? <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, you have to you really have to present yourself as just not just a real estate agent, but you run a business, but also take it into effect, you know, as far as your client's well-being as well. So relationships all day. OK. OK. So let's talk promotion. Mm-hmm. Of course, you know, I'm talking about social media. Mm-hmm. You want it heavy. <laughs> Are you doing that? You got somebody running it for you? Like, how did you get the idol? What's your what's your game plan when, when you're using your social media to promote yourself? For sure. So I always look at social. So when I first got into the business, it's so funny. I had a coach. His name was Coach T. He's still my my lifetime coach for sure um, in real estate. And he was like, you got to get on the phones. You got to knock on doors. You got to do this. Like back from what I was saying, like the old school way. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm not knocking on no doors i'm not you know calling people i want people to come to me so i actually started using facebook as a way to present myself to family friends i mean you were already following me on on social media you were already enjoying my content and wasn't content back then it was like let me just create a post Mm -hmm. you were already enjoying that so you trusted me as a person already so now i needed you to trust me as an agent so when i just started throwing myself out there as far as just being a resource to people that's how social media actually got me leads to actually with people that actually closed on properties and so that wasn't really heard of to be honest with you like five years ago now fast forward now i look at social media i mean it's it's the only way it's the it's the only way um but i also look at it as a resource to get people out of social media so if it's someone that's looking to buy sell or invest in real estate you know you found me on social media but i want your name email address and phone number so we can start chatting outside of social media well yeah yeah social media is just it's just the introduction for sure then you want to you know get more personable for sure let's get off of here yeah for sure i think social media too is like your resume 
You know, yeah. it's your resume. of. Uh, I mean, because if, at the end of the day on your resume, you put what you want to put on your resume. You're not going to put craziness on your resume. You're going to make yourself look pristine on your resume. And same thing with social media. You know, this is your resume of people being able to see you doing your work. People being able to see you still have a little bit of lifestyle. And people understanding that you know your stuff by posting stuff that they can actually use. So, So you have like a calendar. You got mm-hmm. like a social media calendar. You got posts. You I got, do it you, myself. You got time posts. Yeah, I do it myself. Listen, I listen, schedule. I, you listen. I, I salute anybody who 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 do it all themselves, man. It, it yeah. is strenuous. It's time consuming. I know you do got to take your breaks here and there. But yeah. it's funny that you mentioned Facebook because Facebook is where I post the least. I Really? So, so, I mean, I got into, let me say something. I'm, and the thing is that you found me on Instagram, but Instagram is literally like my least favorite. I love Facebook for some reason. Really, I feel like that Facebook, and just in my opinion, is more personable. If I that think makes it's, sense. I think it's for the for the for the the industry that you're in. Yeah, yeah. Because for me, you know, I post. Well, I, I as of recently, I had to kind of switch up how I post my my clips and stuff like mm-hmm. that. But I could just post a clip on Instagram. I could just post it on TikTok. I could do a YouTube short. And one of them are going to hit. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I'll post it on Facebook. It's crickets, crickets. People <laughs> people don't follow me on Facebook because of this. They follow me because of me making a lot of stupid meme posts and stuff like that. Right. You know, I, I make a lot of crazy posts. Right. But, and um, I, th- I don't think that Facebook is more so like video. Like No, it's you not. Know, it's, 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 more it's not. Because I'll go pictures. in there and ask a question. I'll yeah. say... I say, hey, the commander's playing, which I think, and mm-hmm. people are coming in. But if I do a video saying, hey, the commander's playing, which I think, they'd be like, because they not do, they, they don't want again. exactly, they don't want to do that. Even threads, I'm, I'm really waiting on threads to go off. I'm waiting. I'm, 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 I'm sticking to it. I know it's moving <laughs> slow, but as the time goes by, the the first fifty million of us that went on it, the day <laughs> came on. It, it's going to work out for us, yeah, man. It's I got, fell off. I, I did fall off on threads. I need to get back on it. It got potential, but you know. I think the problem with it is, it's like everybody wants to grow. So all I see on, on my threads is, um, please surround me with uh, photographers and videographers and real estate agents. Everyone is copying mm-hmm. the same thing and using it. And they're just using it to get more people to follow you. But the thing with threads is, no one knows how many followers you have. Exactly. Well, they, well, they do, but yeah. well, they don't know how many people you're following. Mm-hmm. So it's like different from twitter i just i feel like it's just a pg-13 twitter but i was never and that's the thing maybe i don't like it because i never was on twitter either i wasn't on it like that i either. wasn't on twitter at all I, and even with the reds like i i the very beginning it was cute i was like okay you know because it was fun and but now i'm just like uh, i don't know when the last time i posted anything yeah, on it's, it's, it's a slow burn it's, it's gonna take a while you know pe- people yeah. will say you know or twitter x whatever you call this want to charge people people gonna pay mm-hmm yeah, people gonna pay. Do you, are you very? You, do you? You have, is your Instagram verified account? No, you're not doing that. Mm-mm. No, I'm not. Because at first it was so cool. We had the blue check mark. That was like I said. I was gonna do it when I get to a thousand. But somebody told me they was like it's good for people that, and maybe I do need to consider it because they said it's good for people that get business from social media. That's what I was told. And so that's why I'm like, okay, well, what is it? maybe. What is it, $10, $15 or something? But it's like a month though. That's a lot. That's $120 a Listen, year. I paid. I pay a shit ton of money already in subscriptions. I, I mean, need somebody I, to verify that I that pay it. it works. Look, I need somebody to verify that it's verified. I, I, now, I wouldn't recommend like me. I'm I'm pushing pushing a thousand mm-hmm. uh, followers. When I get to a thousand, I'll do it. But mm-hmm. now at like seven something, no, it, it ain't worth it. So, yeah. But I mean, you know, most of the people with a million, two million, of course they are. You know, but I think yeah. that's just more so to apparently they say it's it's good for the business side and it's also good to confirm that this is really you. Yeah. Because. I mean, but the thing is, you can tell when it's really somebody, though. Can you? Yeah. I mean, because a lot of times, well, from what I've seen, maybe I probably am just delusional. But a lot of times the bots are the ones that, or the fake pages, everything is done like one day, two days, three days, Mm -hmm. you know, four pitches in one day. I'm like, that doesn't even make sense. But nowadays, it's like once you get to that status where you you got a couple hundred thousand followers, now you got these people making these fan pages. I follow this lady on TikTok. I don't know why. But all she do is she country as hell and she go to the store and she buy stuff and she buy food. And then I just happen to be looking on uh, Facebook and she on Facebook, but her hair is longer and the videos is different. I was like, 
This not- <laughs> is this not you? So I went and called I was like, is this you? Or you or you been hacked? And all of a sudden now I got all these bot messages coming. Uh, I'm like, nah, nah, yeah, you ain't gonna get me. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know. I mean, it, it it might keep the bots away. I don't know. I don't know. I gotta check, I gotta verify. I'm gonna see. Yeah. It's ten dollars a month, so ten? I'm gonna have to do less um Starbucks. Oh, man. You gotta make coffee at home. <laughs> I did. I do. Oh, you want to go? It's just yeah. <clears throat> it's just not Starbucks though. Understood. Understood. <laughs> you should you should get an espresso machine. You ever had it? I didn't. I'm espresso have to ask is somebody gets some for it's Christmas. It's close to only thing is you can only get the coffee from either Montgomery Mall or Pentagon City. Hey, who got time for that? It's good coffee. I'm at the National Harbor. Right. It's, it's good coffee though. Mm. You Pentagon City right there. That's not that close. Well, yeah, that's it right is. there. It just in it. hit it it's during right the day. There. Get you about. It's expensive. See, that's what I'm saying. It's more. I might as well just go I was, to Starbucks. I would say this: the next time you're in Pentagon City, just go in there, and have them. They make you a cup mm-hmm. and taste it. I bet you walking, you walking out there with the whole kit. <laughs> it's, we had it for the longest, and but the machine we bought it broke, and then we got another one that broke. I was like, God. So now we just got a tr- traditional pot. I mean, I mean, I still got my little pot that I, I love. Like the, the pot is, you know, only only my only issue with the pot is it be let it be left over. Yeah, that's yeah, it. You know, yeah. they're trying to give it to you exact with a little foam on the top. All right, we we, we, all, we all over the place. Let's get back. We so, don't to coffee. I know that's okay. That's what the, that's what a good conversation do to exactly. you. Exactly. So, how do you stay informed on like changes in the market and and the business industry and all that? Um, so I have a good office, um, or brokerage that I'm a part of, which is Keller Williams Preferred Properties. So in Upper Marlboro, Maryland, woo woo. Um, and they are very good at keeping us informed of like the trends, um, and also like what's going on in the local market as well. Um, also just the multiple listing services. So that pretty much is the database that all real estate agents have access to that Redfin and Zillow get all of their information from when homes are for sale or coming soon. So you can actually create uh, reports to show trends, like how many days on the market, how long does it take? I mean, did a property sell for the list price that they asked for? Um, things of that nature to really understand which direction the market is going for sure. Um, besides that, I mean, I just also follow or go to networking events, uh, to understand what's going on. And for me, you know, I, I like to know what's going on again in the local market and not the national news. Um, Mm. because it's something to, and I think that's what people got to understand too, is that we have a different market than what California market may be or what Houston market may be. So when you're looking at like CNN and Fox News and stuff like that, and you're getting, you know, real estate updates, they're talking about the U.S. overall, but not specific to D.C., Maryland and Virginia. Mm. So I think that's important to understand, too, what your market is actually doing. Understood. Good, good answer. Just <laughs> you study this what we got here. I'm going to start just not giving people the answer. It'll just catch you off guard. <laughs> Look, I talk off the top of my head, so you ain't got to nah, it's okay. I'm, I'm joking with you. So, <laughs> can you share a, uh, a memorable story with you, whether it's good, bad, challenging, mm-hmm. just a good story? Um. So, a good story that I have recently is that I was working with a VA client. Um, and so, they were looking to purchase a home, but this husband was very specific that he wanted an assumable loan. And pretty much what that is, is that interest rates right now is in like the sevens or whatever the case may be. But if you are a buyer that has either a VA loan or you have an FHA loan and a seller of a home that you're interested in has a VA loan or an FHA loan, you can assume their monthly payments and their interest rate. So, <laughs> really? So, this process took a while. It took about six months to actually do this. And, and we finally found a home. They went under contract. They were so, so patient, but they were able to get into that house that was about like $550,000 with a 2.5 interest rate in this market. That's crazy. I in didn't know you could do market. that. Yep, you can actually do it. And, and people, that's what I'm saying. It's just like, it's shout so much. Out the, shout out to the VA. <laughs> Yeah. Listen, shout out. I keep telling people that's the MVP of loans right there. Man, the look, VA. The, look, the VA loan. Let me tell you, the first house we came in there, we had to put up like two grand. We got it back. Mm-hmm. For this house, we had to come in there for what? I think it was 1500 We didn't get that back. But yeah. compared to what I be, I got a buddy of mine. He was We was in Costa Rica uh, last month, and he was trying to get a house 
while he was trying to close on a house while he was over there. And, mm-hmm. and his realtor told him that he had to come to the table with 50 grand. 50 over. grand for what? How, what, where was this? It was, <laughs> it was, uh, it was a house in Laurel. It was a lot of people trying to get it. And I don't 50 know. 50 grand? Yeah, it was like, it was like 50 grand he would have had to bring to the table to get the house. He didn't, he didn't get it. And I was like, yeah, bro, I don't, nah. I don't think you needed that. But I mean, he was he was that's in a, crazy. He was in a situation where he needed to get in some ASAP. So I don't know if that means anything for the closing. But yeah, he he would have had. To he had a in. VA loan. No, no, he didn't have VA loan, so he probably did no closing calls help. They he was probably, they, they they were they were not giving any closing help. Yep, no down payment assistance, anything. No. So he was paying strictly coming out of pocket. Oh wow, yeah. yeah he, I did, now now that you're saying that, no, that makes sense. I mean, he he had it. He was like, well, I mean, I got it, but you know, who wants to put that much into a house? Listen, if I ain't had a VA loan and I and I had to bring what, what what's a normal range like twenty twenty five thousand or something? Well, it just depends. So it could be probably around like uh, between four to five percent of the list price or, or the contract price, both including that. So that's the down payment and the closing costs total about like five percent. Yeah, I just would have been in a apartment. Yeah, I ain't paying all that. That's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, so he didn't. I think he found something else. But I was like, damn, bro. So yeah. what advice do you have for first-time home buyers? Uh, the advice that I have is just to understand the reason that you're doing it. Um, because this is this is this is a cutthroat industry. This is a cutthroat market right now. And so for you understand the reason that you're doing it will help you through those long days and long nights. Um, and me you calling me venting about whatever the case may be. I mean, that's just this type of market right now. Um, I also feel like for first time home buyers, you have to understand that it's a different mindset. Like I mentioned before, um, this is something that you're trying to gain, generate generational wealth, um, you know, or even just having something that you can just call your own um, for sure. So having that that different mindset of of the real estate, of real estate and, and, and the buying process um, is needed, uh, to be honest with you, um, overall. Also, I think that just to have the conversation, it doesn't, it, listen, I know we get this bad stigma about real estate agents, like we're just salespeople, this and that, but really? oh, listen, we, we, we get, we get so much, but you know, oh, it's, 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 that's, that's really not what we're here for, to be honest with you. Um, I, I think just for me personally, not, and I won't say everybody, but for me personally, I get joy in actually educating as well. So, you know, having that conversation conversation, the initial conversation, I have um, helped so many people actually become homeowners because of the stigma that they thought was um, towards real estate. Um, And so I just feel like that just having the conversation, you don't have to sign anything, you're not liable for anything, but just having the conversations with myself and even with the lender is also a good step for you to have too as a first time home buyer. And it's crazy you said that about speaking and educating. Now, if I'm not following, I've been following you for a little bit, mm-hmm. and I think you did a, some type of some seminars or some events where you were talking mm-hmm. and things like that. Can you talk about that? Yeah. So I I, I have well, I've done a couple of um, speaking engagements for sure, just not with um, people that's looking to buy or sell or invest in real estate, but also for other agents as well. Um, and so with my seminars, what I like to do is really educate throughout the whole process and having those um, expertise experts there as well. So the lenders, the title companies, the um, uh, the inspectors, everyone that's involved in the whole uh, process of you uh, trying to buy a property. Um, and so with those with those seminars, we're just really um it's, it's, a, it's a platform where you can be open and honest about your situation. You know, it doesn't have to be in front of the whole room like you <laughs> like anything mm-hmm. like that. But, you know, just being open and honest with your situation so I can help you as much as possible. So, I mean, I really enjoy, like I said, just educating and being able to, you know, give people the right advice um, or advice that will help them into the right direction. How often do you, is this this a yearly thing or just Mm-mm. as, as, as it comes, you get called or? No. So I, um, I have my seminars every other month. Um, for sure. The next one that I'm having will be either December 2nd or December 9th, um, at my office. It's going to be a, a vision board. 
uh, okay. type seminar. Cool. So it just helps people just throughout the process. And you don't have to be the person that has to sell like or buy a property like next week or anything like that. It's more so just for you to have the education that you need, you know, like I said, to make a sound decision. Okay. So, yeah, make, if, if I could get that information, you know, before this goes up, I can put that in the description of the, of the YouTube. For I think sure. that'd be dope. For sure. Um, so let's talk work life balance. I know y'all yeah, ain't got no traditional schedule. <laughs> You know, I know it could be Thanksgiving Day. It's this house. So how are you balancing this? So, I mean, so I have a team for sure. I have an assistant. Um, I also have, I mean, a virtual assistant. I also have a showing partner to help me with showing properties to clients. I have a transaction coordinator to help me, like, once we're under contract, being able to manage the contracts to make sure that we go to closing and um, meeting deadlines. So it's a definitely a team effort for sure. And, I mean, like I tell people, you know, you, you teach people how to treat you. So if, if you run your if you run your real estate business like a business then people will understand like you don't have to call me nine o'clock ten o'clock at night for something that we can't really focus on until regular business hours so I try to just have those expectations up front like these are my hours of course if it's a dire emergency you of course we can have the conversation um but just keeping my clients just well informed about listen, this is a business and this is how we're going to run this business. So it's not really as bad as people think, but you do have it in your head all the time about real estate. I mean, everywhere I go, I'm thinking about real estate, <laughs> even though I may be, you know, off of work or even out of the country or out of town, but you always think about real estate. So, so in, in your industry, when's the best time to vacation? <laughs> Rest on vacation. Is it a time? Is it a time to vacation? Tuesday through Thursday. <laughs> what? No. Um. But, so the good thing about it is that if you have the right systems in place, you can vacation any time, any year. It. I mean, any time of the day, any any month of the year. It doesn't matter. Um, because you can really do everything you need to do on either on your computer or on your phone. So honestly, I really don't have to physically be there for you to be able to accomplish your real estate goal. Of course, I build that relationship with you, of course, where I'm involved as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm going on vacation or anything like that, the, the train doesn't stop. It's still the same process of you looking at homes. If you need to contact me, I have set hours when I'm on vacation that we can chat. Um, so, yeah, we, we we can work from anywhere. And that's the benefit of real estate. But it's got to be like a busy and a slow time of the year, right? Yeah, for sure. So the busy time is doing spring. Spring and summer, mm. because that's when people have their kids out of school. Um, and so that's the time where they're like, OK, this is the best time for us to find a different local, you know, different home and a school system and things like that. So some spring and summer is always uh, the, the busiest time. OK. Yeah. The slowest time is when it's cold outside. <laughs> so around this time. And that's probably when you're not going to see as many houses on the market. Mm -hmm. mm. Yep. Or and then, but it's also a good time where if you're a buyer, it's less competition as well on your end. So, you know, this is time for you to slide in and be like, okay, let me go ahead and check out to see what properties are available. I just can't see myself carrying no boxes and code in the house. I'm not doing to, it. I'm going to be like, I'm, I'm at the point now, next house, I'm going to have to hire them people. And let's, like, look, man, just wrap this up. I've, I've, I've and, had to hire. I've had to hire people because, yeah. 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 It's, it's because, I mean, it's just easier. Like, pack your stuff and then just watch them take your stuff. And if they mess it up, you better be bonded and assured. I ain't even, I ain't even trying to do that. <laughs> I ain't trying to pack. Look, I need you to take these pictures off and just hold it like this. So we get to the next room, put it back on the wall. That's how I need it. No, I mean, they got people for that, too. I'm on that type of lazy. That's Look, where I'm at. It's going to cost you, but they got that, too. You can have it. So. No, no. I ain't, ain't going to do that. I, I ain't that lazy. <laughs> So a question for you. Sure. So you as an agent, you know what I'm saying? You have been through hundreds, probably thousands of houses. Let's mm -hmm. talk about your house. Mm -hmm. Not the one you in, but let's just talk about you trying to get a house. Mm -hmm. What's your must-haves? My must-haves. I'm a condo girl. I love a good condo with everything on one floor. Mm. Views. I love a good view. I love natural sunlight. Um, I love open space to mm -hmm. be able to entertain. Um, I love to be in a location that is um, convenient to, you know, entertainment, grocery stores, things like that. So, um, yeah, it's a place that is updated. <laughs> so you, you like modern. I love modern. But I know that it's going to cost, though, too. So mm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm just every time I look on TV, like it was crazy. It's a house that I seen and I felt like. 
If I was making millions of dollars, I would have did it like this. Did you see Bradley Bill's house? No. Oh, the one that's, that's on the market. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 I know the agent that actually listed the property. He did that perfectly. He did. Just black and white. It's not too much. It is, you know, it's actually a lot of money, but it's yeah. Bethesda. But yeah. perfectly, I would have did it just like that. Yeah. Right? No, you know what's my ideal when I say condo? Ghosts off of power. Remember his condo? The one his with the, all the windows and all mm -hmm. that. And had the, the elevator. The high up? Yes, with the elevator that went straight up. I mean, in this, we're not going to have it in the DMV. We can't go up but so high. Mm -hmm. Like, we restricted because we're near, next to the, uh, near the White House. But I want, I, that's the type I want. I want the views. I want the elevator. I want the modern that's chic what my wife look. Want. She's like, let's, uh, get, let's get a house in D.C. I'm like, never. Never. <laughs> we never move to D.C. I have a pickup truck. Are you kidding me? Isn't it terrible? I hate oh, these. Oh I listen. I just. I feel like. <laughs> I feel like the single family house is in jeopardy right now. Yeah. Because they're building these townhouses. They're building a whole new neighborhood right over here where Reed Temple is. Yes, yeah, I don't Lake. know. Yeah, they're building this whole. Is that what it's called? Yep. They're building this whole neighborhood, and I think it's supposed. It's all single family. It's supposed to be some townhouses in there too, but. Townhouses are taking over. There's too many. Yeah. There's too many steps. Yeah, no, townhouses are taking over, and it's actually they put a, a well, they proposed a bill um, to cease townhome builds for for a while too, um, because that's what they were saying. It was like the infrastructure is not holding it together for us to be it's able to do many. that. And I mean, listen, I I I had a townhome, and now I have a condo, but my townhome I was able to rent it out. I think they are good for rentals, to be honest with you, because um, I think someone would look forward to more so renting a townhome than probably like a single family home um but yeah it's a it's a lot of townhomes that's being built that's like ridiculous right now for sure you think the rental thing is really the wave renting rent these rental homes by renting houses to people and all that is that, is that really the thing that, i see i see a lot of people doing it but i'm like it just seems like it's a headache that's a, i mean that's the thing i mean because at the end of the day your ultimate goal, I mean, I mean, it just depends on what your goal is. Like, if your goal is like, listen, I want to have some investment properties or whatever the case may be, then your first property that you purchase would be a good cash flow for you. Um, and then rent is always going up. Like, And rent, people are right, always right. renting. It's People will always need to rent for sure. And so, I mean, and the thing is, I mean, you can get prop property management companies to help run it. I was told that you literally can get somebody to do the whole thing. You, you can get somebody to do the whole thing. But, they how, do but the, how much are they getting out of that? They're not getting much. I mean, they're probably getting out of, out of maybe 250 a month. A month. Yeah. That's not bad. At that. So, I mean, if you get in cash flow where you, you know, your your mortgage is like $1,300, $1,400 a month. Mind you, this is like a property, like the property that you sold in Suitland. If you would have rented that property out, how much was your uh, paying 1900 rent? You was paying 1900 And that's what, a three-bedroom single family? Uh, it was four. Four bedrooms? Mm -hmm. And a fully, the basement, was, everything was done. Oh, yeah. You were probably able to get like twenty five, twenty six hundred dollars $2,600 a month. All for that. And if you really want to be smart, you can do Section 8. And Section 8, I had that government I just heard you. the horror stories about, I got a buddy, he he got rental properties. He's got three. Mm -hmm. He won't do it. Because he was just like, he's like, yeah, it's guaranteed money, but he's just like the risk. I know two people that have done it. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's just like the horror stories of when you got to get the people out. Mm -hmm. Like he had a, he had a, uh, he had a townhouse in, I think it was... Somewhere in Glen Burnie. Mm -hmm. And he had to get the people out. And they trashed the joint and left. Like, mm -hmm. trashed it. Like, it was shit everywhere. And just trashed it up and left. And then the one guy, he was just like, you know, stuff. They just kept breaking stuff. Mm -hmm. And then he was coming and replacing them. He was just like, well, how stuff keep getting broken? Because I was having parties every weekend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... You know, I'm not saying I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't be opposed to it. But, you know, you have to be in order if you're yeah. coming up in one of my my spots. And I think it's more so, too, like the prop having that property management company. Did he have a – I mean, you probably don't know. Probably not. And that's the thing. Like, you, you want to save costs and cut costs and be like, I could do it myself. And he, didn't, and he moved away. So he didn't even live in the state. So I was like, well, who, who checked so who's the house? Exactly. Exactly. So if you had a property management company to go in there and in the actual lease, it says, okay, you can go in there every quarter. Order, every three months, check it out. Every six months, whatever the case may be, then you can go ahead and do that. Where you continuously bake in the updates that need to be done or the maintenance that need to be done on the property. So it's it's ways to get around it, um, for sure. I mean, yeah, you do have those b terrible ones that just do crazy stuff as well. But then also too, you have to look at 
if I'm renting out to Section 8, I'm doing it just, just this way. If I'm renting out to someone that had an income, you know, coming in based on a nine to five, I'm going to run your credit. I'm going to check with, you know, past uh, uh, t- uh, um, landlords, see how you were doing. Um, I even have where some sometimes, well, with my last last one that I actually rented out, I had someone completely that was not me go to the property to see how you were actually living. Mm. in the property like like our, our neighbor when we moved in the first house our neighbor we didn't know he was renting mm-hmm. but man this thing was trashed he had people coming in i think it was a crack house or something mm-hmm. you know so i'm coming out you know i end up saying something to him it's only you know I, me as a homeowner this is my house so this is like i gotta protect my family so mm-hmm. i'm like look man you you moving real crazy out here my kids out here i was like you got cars pulling up parking in because we had adjoining driveways mm-hmm. i was like you got cars parking in my driveway thinking that you know that that's cool i was like you got to tighten up so eventually he had to move so the owners came and he let me see the inside of the house man it was a room with lighters all in the corner so i'm looking at him i was like you didn't know none of this was going on exactly he's like well you know we we you know i'm like we what I, <laughs> I was legitimately like waiting for an explanation he really didn't have an answer so mm. this dude was in there he wasn't paying the rent and just trashed the house and he had to gut the whole thing he had to gut the whole house everything to redo it to sell it and even then he, he ended up not selling he was gonna take a loss that's because he had put probably Two hundred thousand dollars in it. Two hundred thousand dollars into the house. Pretty much. Oh my god. Something, something around there. Yeah, he had to. He, he had to literally get everything in there redone. It was like so much. Like you know, if, if you're in a room where it's like smoke, you're smoking all the time, mm-hmm. and it's just like on the wall type of thing. Oh like, yeah. He no. had to get all. Because then of you got to take all your carpet out, the padding, and everything. Yes, yeah. he had to get every all the paint in there stripped. He had to rip all the appliances out. Everything. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. And I just sat there out the window. What to do? I, I just crazy. I got this picture. I post it every now and then, where he had this van that was parked in the driveway and it never moved, mm-hmm. and it was finally getting towed. And it was a picture of me with some coffee. I just was the biggest smile ever in my robe, <laughs> looking like, yeah, get get that shit out of here, man. So, Dang, um, so yeah. I, I just look at stuff like that. I was like, man, look, I got I got PTSD, man. Yeah. I don't I don't have the patience for that. But I, if I didn't put some money in this. And you come in here and trash it, man. We're gonna have a problem. Yeah. We're gonna have a problem that ain't going that ain't gonna get solved legally. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So And I think that the only I think to I mean, I, I think you people are should expect if you're gonna be a landlord, there are certain things that you probably would have to do once they move out. Carpet already granted probably would have to get carpet done again the blinds will probably have to be done especially if you got the cheap blinds from home depot um and then of course like painting like those things of course should be your normal okay i know that i have to get these things done um but besides that like holes in the wall and all of that and the thing about it is is that Ten, like I wish tenants would just tell you they like to keep you secrets like they talk to their parents they don't want to tell you that okay this is happening it's a small leak here whatever the case may be they want to wait until it get drastic then they want to mention it to you mm. so that's another thing with building relationships and having that trust factor of listen don't trash my place treat this place like it's yours you know I, I'll treat you fairly you treat me fairly type thing and having that mutual agreement instead of just the I'm the landlord and you're the tenant type thing. You know, it really doesn't work out for the best. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to look into it. I'm going to look into it. All right. So what's the future of your brand? Um, I want to get more involved with creating inventory because um, that's the lack the slack, the lack um, that we're having in uh in, in, D, in the DMV, in the U.S. period, is the is the lack of inventory. So when I say that, I want to get more involved with my investors um, and possibly with developers as well to really be able to connect buyers with developers or with investors where if an investor finds a home um, or if you find a home, you can have this investor renovate it and you just directly, directly, you purchase it from them directly. Mm. Um, so I just want to be that uh, connection um, with being able to create the inventory. If you don't see it on the market, well, okay, then we can create it for you instead of going to the big developers like, you know, Ryan Holmes or Stanley Martin. You know, we can have an exclusive mm. buyer find, you know, have that property just built from the ground up for them. That'd be dope. Yeah. Okay. Last question. Um, any advice for any future upcoming inspiring real estate agents? Don't do it. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, be patient. If you're getting your real estate license, 
again, just like any buyer that's looking to purchase a home, just understand what your why is. Because it's going to be days where it's going to be like, I don't want to do this anymore type thing. But just be patient with yourself. Understand what your big why is. Yes, it's good money for sure. But at the end of the day, you do a lot for what you get paid. Um, You have those sleepless nights. You miss time with your family. You miss a lot. And so in the beginning, it's just having that patience, understanding your why um, and then understanding the market itself like be a student of the game for as long as possible I've been in business for five years and I'm still a student in the game and I still plan to be a student of the game for a long period of time because you have to understand how the market is evolving for you to be able to cater to the public and being that resource or being that helping hand for for the um, for the public so just take your time and, and understand what you're really getting yourself into and have a mentor as well um, to help you guide you through uh, through the process. Mentor is very clutch, man. This is a very underrated tool, man. Yes. And find a mentor. I'm still looking for a mentor for, for this, what I'm doing. Yeah. As well as photography. I'm doing that now, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because if somebody has already been through it, they can just help you not go through the BS when they can be like, no, just try to do it this way. Mm-hmm. You know, find the people that you see them on a level that you're trying to get to and be like, listen, I'm trying to, I'm trying to do what you do. Well, how can I do it? Um, and not even really just asking, but being involved in helping me making their life easy as well. Cause we always like to find a mentor mm. and be like, you can, I, can I, can I, uh, what they say, what they say, can I pick your brain? Oh yeah. Oh, I do it all the time. No, you can't pick my brain. But if you want to, you could show this property for me or you could do this and that to where now you're getting the actual activity of, you know, someone that you want want to be your mentor. So it's 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 making their life a little easier, too. Very good. Very good. <laughs> Well, look, I don't have any more questions for you. You got any questions for me? No. You got to ask at least one. You got to ask at least one. You know anybody looking to buy, sell, invest in real estate? (laughs) I got a buddy, man. He, he, he. In the sort of commercial side, man, but he's just like, man, I'm about to buy this building. I'm like, God damn, buy slow, the like, slow down, bro. <laughs> he in it though, man. He 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 traveled to different states to these conferences. He be shaking hands with these people, man. He he in it really. And he just just waiting to get that one so he can hit, man. I said, just best of luck, man. But just he's trying to get into commercial. Did he has he purchased? Before? I don't know. He just, I, I just, I be listening when he want to talk, but it's, it's well beyond me. So I'm just, like, I be just be like, yeah, man, you, you, you got it, man. Just make sure you, you, you safe. Yeah. I'm like, this sound risky. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so no, he, he skipped over properties. He, right. he want to do commercials. So I mean, you can always do. So I mean, as a first time home buyer, a lot of people do like the four units. So where you purchase the four unit building, live in one, and then you get that rental income from the other ones. I think. I think he passed that. He passed that too. He put money in like like apartment complex. Oh, he's trying of, to oh type of joints. He, okay. He on that type like they about to be, rebuild it or build one. He trying to get in in that type of stuff. Oh yeah. So, so he trying to be a proud a, a quiet uh, investor. Yeah, he trying to do something like that. So Listen, I mean, if it work, I mean, can if, if let it work. So all you can yeah. be is just shake your head, be like. Good job. <laughs> mm. Well, look, I appreciate you coming through. Of um, course. Before you go, let the people know where they can find all your social media handles. For sure. So I am Samantha.Johnson.Realtor on Instagram, um, the Melanin Agent. I am also just Samantha L. Johnson on Facebook. And uh, if you need to contact me directly, my email address is S. L Johnson at kw.com and my office number is 301-377-1530. Very good. Well, here you have it. Miss Johnson, we are done. Capping out. Thank you.